Hello and welcome to Norton Live Streams. Thank you for, for joining. Okay, so uh, Norton Live Streams are part of a series of streams we've been doing over the a lot of months in the past. And uh, if you've missed any of the, the previous streams that we have done, they've all been recorded and you can find them on our YouTube site, our Norton Abrasives EMEA YouTube site or the Norton EMEA website. So if you like what you see today, you can catch up on loads of interesting topics to do with uh, uh, abrasives uh, uh, on these channels. So please have a look at uh, your leisure. Before we start today, I'd just like to, to give you a bit of advice to try and enhance your, your viewing pleasure, depending on what country you're actually viewing from, because we are uh, broadcasting uh, globally today. Uh, so there is a, a little tool within the platform we're using Microsoft Teams today, uh, which is called Closed Captions. You'll see a little cog uh, gear icon down at the bottom of your screen. If you are not an uh, English speaker, you can click on that clog, uh, clog, cog, and select the language of, uh, of your choice for subtitles of my, uh, my terrible English. Uh, make things a little bit easier for you and for some of you English people out there as well. Okay, so today, a little bit of a different topic. We're gonna talk about how to get the best from your rapid prep material. And um, what I mean by rapid prep is your surface conditioning material, essentially. That's what is better known as in the market. But from us here at Norton, we call it uh, rapid, uh, rapid prep. Okay, so uh, first of all, I think it's, it's good to introduce who I am and who another colleague who's going to be uh, doing some, uh, some speaking today on the, on the live stream. Uh, I'm Paul Gray. I live in the center of England in Cheshire. I've been with uh, Sanger Band for 18 years now, so a long time served at the, at the company. Um, I'm an application engineer for MRO for the whole of, uh, of Europe, so a large extensive uh, area, quite a lot of experience in, in manufacturing. Now I'm going to pass you over to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Robin Cook, who I hope is uh, online. Robin? Yes, I'm here, Paul. Good afternoon uh, Good to afternoon. you and to everybody. How you doing, mate? You okay? I'm good, thank you. Pleased to hear it. Right, would you mind introducing yourself, young man? Yeah, I've uh, 31 years with uh, abrasives and uh, my role now is on uh, the non-woven products and I've seen all of these families that we're going to be introducing uh, throughout this uh, live stream. Uh, I've seen them grow and generate a lot of business for us, not only for us, but for our customers as well. And uh, uh, the, the specific family of rapid prep surface conditioning material is one of our newest ones, uh, 10 years old, and uh, we're looking forward to discussing that today. Thanks. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that, Robin. So I think if we can just have a, 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 a view overhead of the, the workbench, I think you can see there's quite a lot of products we've got here today. So the rapid prep family, and this is even you can see here, loads of different products, loads of different grades here. This is just a snippet, a small selection of the type of products available within the rapid prep family of, of non-woven abrasives. So there are many, many shapes and, and types of, uh, of product we can convert this, this material into. Um, so today we're going to be looking at surface conditioning discs in two different uh, grit technologies. We're going to be looking at uh, surface conditioning uh, flap discs. We're going to be looking at rapid prep, uh, what we call pump sleeve belts for, for linear finishing. And then at, finally, we're going to be looking at uh, some file belts for awkward and difficult to, uh, to reach areas. So the intention for, for today is, uh, oh, oh, actually, while we're on that screen, sorry, Martin, if you, Martin is uh, the camera guy who's working with his production manager today. And uh, uh, I just forgot to mention about, uh, about the tools that we've got here. So we, we've got an angle grinder we're going to be using here today with the, with the round, uh, the rotary uh, discs that we have here. We have a, a Saturn X machine or a burnisher, some people call it, to use with the pump sleeve. And we also have uh, a file belt machine to use with the uh, file belts. And we're going to be looking at stainless steel generally today, but maybe a little bit of aluminium and also some quite exotic material here that you can maybe see under, which is in uh, a turbine blade made, made from uh, Inconel. So a few different uh, types of material and a lot of different types of products and machines to go through in the next 40 minutes we should be here. So about 35 minutes left on this. So we've got to go pretty rapid through all this to get it covered. So as I say, we'll be uh, finishing after about 40 minutes from the start. At the end of the live stream, we'll have a live question and answers uh, session. For, so for those of you who are watching the recorded session, sorry, you won't be able to take part in that, but those are here live. As we go through the presentation, 
any questions or queries you have on what you're seeing today, pop them into the chat and Robin can then at the end of the end of the meeting, we'll have a little five minute discussion uh, to go through any any questions you have and we'll answer them to the best of our uh, our ability. OK, so I think it's apt to introduce uh, a, a little PowerPoint of our rapid prep material. Because as I say, it's such a big range of material. So it, Robin, could you just describe uh, a little bit more about uh, rapid prep as a family? Sure. So first of all, uh, as you're seeing on your screen there, um, what are non-wovens and where does the rapid prep, where does the rapid prep surface condition material fit into that? So as you can see from the uh, the, the screen, uh, non-wovens are very simple. There's it's just three main ingredients: uh, synthetic fibers, um, abrasive grain, and the resin that holds the grain onto those fibers and that they give a three dimensional uh, finishing uh, tool which we can compress or we can add a backing to. Uh, you've all used non-wovens at home perhaps when you uh, scrub the pots and pans. So these these products can be used and not only from the home but they can also be used in a variety of industrial market and applications as well. Um, next slide, please, Martin. So as you can see, there are five main families for the non-woven uh, products. Um, we are going to be concentrating on the middle one, the rapid prep surface conditioning material, as you can see in there. But as I said earlier, there are five different families in there. You're probably more familiar with the one on the right hand side, which would be the hand pad material. Uh, but uh, the other four on the left hand side, uh, a little bit more technical for lots of metal fabrication and uh, mainly metal fabrication applications. So uh, like we said, we're going to focus on the surface conditioning material. If you imagine that that material is pretty much starting off like a, a, a hand pad, but then we add a backing to it to make it much more durable. Uh, and that backing can be in a variety of different types and we'll show a little bit about that in a second. But uh, the backing is designed to make the product or the non-woven abrasive much more durable. So if you imagine trying to make a belt out of a hand pad type material, it wouldn't work. So we need that backing to give it a bit of um, resistance and durability. Uh, it won't uh, it won't tear. Uh, it won't shred, uh, so we need that backing. And we, from that backing, once it has that, we can then make it into belts and discs. So you saw from the tabletop poles, um, there's a variety of different uh, shapes that we can make that material into. Next slide, please, Martin. So just to show the uh, the, the types of um, uh, uh, families here, um, we have three types. We have the the LF, which is what we call low flex. So there's a degree of stiffness about this particular uh, backing. And we have the RF, which would we would call regular flex. So a little bit less stiff than the uh, the low flex. Uh, and then we have the X flex, X flex, which is the extra flex material, which is mainly used for file belts. Uh, so some of the products that uh, we have on the tabletop today to, to demonstrate are across these three different uh, families within the rapid prep category. Uh, thanks Martin and the the applications are widespread. Uh, again, as it says on the on the screen here, removing surface defect defects, you can uh, there's a lot of handling marks and pit marks that are generated in metal fabrication, so those those can be removed. Uh, we can get to the, the the correct surface finish in just one operation. Uh, remember as well, there's five different grades within uh, a rapid prep family, so from extra coarse all the way through to very fine. And Paul will mention a few of those in a in a, in a second. Um, but the main benefits here of the product is that uh, they get to that finish level that you're looking for very, very quickly and consistently as well. 
I think that's the important word there, Robin, to be honest with you, the consistency of the product. It, uh, um, with, with some of the abrasives, such as coated abrasives, they do actually change as you as the, you wear the grain down. It gets uh, ever finer. If you start with a 40 grit, as you use it, it, it starts to finish finer and finer as, as it goes through its lifetime. But with the rapid prep or non-woven type abrasives, it's consistent right till the end of the, the life. Correct, Robin? Absolutely, Paul. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the other main benefit that we have within there is that people don't want the product to smear. So when you generate heat or you dwell in the one contact area for too long, yeah. uh, the, the resins and the fibers can start to melt and they generate into a kind of glue-like substance, which becomes a black mark on your metal component. We call that smearing and we have uh, a a patented clean bond resin technology that uh, allows you to uh, generate uh, or, or run at, at high sp higher speeds, uh, generating a little bit more heat uh, or dwelling in the one contact area for, for longer. So that, with that benefit, uh, you don't get the smearing uh, and you don't get the situation where you have to rework the part, which is time and money to your uh, customers. Thank you very much, Robin, for that. That's uh, much appreciated. Well said. And uh, yeah, so Robin was alluring earlier to um, to the fact that when we receive or the the, the fabricator receives a, a piece of uh, stainless like this into the into the workshop, it's got a lot of handling marks on there. I'm not sure if you can see in the light. It's quite difficult to get that. I'll just try and focus it. But you can see there's a lot of yeah. You go perfect. Thank you, Martin. A lot of scratches, a lot of defects on there that you can see from handling damage. You know where it's been moving through the factory or even just in transit from the rolling mill where they where they put this piece of steel into together it uh, they're not looking so nice so if you're you're making a a beautiful fabrication such as you know balustrades handrails or something like this it's it's uh, we need to remove them to make it look uh, look more uniform um so we'll show you a few different ways of of doing that with the different products we have in front of us here today <laughs> a lot to choose from but we're going to start first of all with uh, with our surface uh, conditioning disc our rapid prep surface conditioning disc we have on uh, on my left here so you're right so if we could just go back overhead please martin um so you can see as robin was speaking earlier there's lots of different uh, grades uh, available in these products and we start um at the very top here with extra coarse now the coloring system is not by accident on here it's kind of an industry standard with with non-woven uh, abrasives um if it's black it's always going to be extra coarse if it's brown it's going to be a coarse grade. If it's maroon, it's going to be medium. If it's green, it's going to be fine. And if it's blue, it's going to be very fine. So we're getting ever finer as we go down to uh, to this product here. And if we go through uh, these stages here, by the time we get to this product, the blue very fine, we'll be achieving a, about a, a 0.4 RA finish, about a number four finish uh, uh, on, on a stainless steel material. So very very fine scratch on there and almost uh, it's, it's not quite sub polished but a very nice uh, luster on the stainless steel and one of the real beauties of the products uh, with a non-woven is that there's no chance to create damage if i was to use a coated abrasive uh, to to grind away these small scratches on here there's a chance i could put some damage or scratches or deep gouges into into the surface but with the non-wovens I'm not able to do that because if it's 3D compressive nature, it doesn't uh, risk uh, to, to damage the, the product. OK, so I think we should get on to a bit of a uh, bit of activity now. So I have a piece of stainless steel in here. So I have two products, I, uh, two product types I could choose from here. I have, again, in the same grade, we can say this extra coarse product. Um, we have on the back two different patterns. So. On this side here, you can see we have a white swirl. On this side here, nothing at all. This is actually quite important for, for our products. So this is denoting the grit technology we have inside here. This product here is a standard aluminum oxide inside there. There's nothing special about that. It's, uh, it's a pretty similar product that you see in the market uh, quite a lot. Very good, does a nice job. But this product on, in my left hand here on the right of the screen here, is our vortex and that's denoted by the vortex swirl that we have on on the backing there and that it is a little bit different than the standard uh, aluminium oxide it is a type of aluminium oxide but it's an agglomerated fused aluminium oxide and it's uh, what it does to us on hard materials such as uh, stainless steel it's much more difficult to uh, to to machine stainless steel 
uh, it actually gives us a, a better cut rate, but still a, enables us to finish uh, finish very finely. So uh, gives us a real, real performance boost with this Vortex. Big advantage, Robin, the Vortex, right? Absolutely. And again, another patent for yeah. uh, Sangaban abrasives. And yeah. um, like you just mentioned, Paul, two steps and one action. So you've got the ability to cut and finish in just one step. Perfect. Yeah. So on this piece of stainless steel here, I have no welds to remove, so I haven't got to do any heavy duty grinding and create big scratches in here, but there are quite some, some damage. Now, if I didn't have the, the power of the vortex in here, I'd probably have to start with a coarse grade, so the, the, the brown uh, grade material uh, at the beginning, to just to get some cut into there to take away the material. But I've got the vortex and I can skip the coarse step here and move straight on to the medium. Okay, so again, you see the white swirl on here denoting the vortex. Because that's got the extra bit of critting power, I'm going to be able to get the scratches out and get to a nice finish instead of two steps, in, in, in one step. So I can just show you how that works. Now, if we could go... Oh, Robin, go on, please. So you're already saving people money, Paul, by cutting out one of those steps. You're an absolute marvel. It's what it's all about, Robin. It's what it's all about, mate. Um, one of the one of the problems with using a, um, a, a disc such as these are the fact that they are actually attached to this backing plate on an angle grinder here with a hook and loop type system. So you can see there, you can, you can almost hear to rip that off. Uh, it's it's not uh, not easy, but it's not so difficult. Now, one of the problems with that is sometimes when these discs are rotating at 11,000 RPM, which is the maximum speed of this angle grinder, they can fly. All right, and that's not ideal. It's never going to cause a great deal of damage, but nobody wants discs flying around in their factory. It's not, a, it's not an ideal situation. So we have on our, our, our backup pad a center pin. Okay, now what that does is that it does actually two different things. First of all, it holds the disc in place when I mount it on here. So you see I can push it over there. So that will stop the disc starting to wonder when, uh, starting to move when I turn the angle grinder on but also it actually centers the disc really nicely as well. So it gets the disc exactly in the center of the backing pad to reduce the vibration levels in, in, in my hands, okay? So it'll, it'll also help us improve the finish having that because the disc is not oscillating. All right, so that's nice and secure due to that center pin and the hook and loop. So there's no chance of that flying off. Um, grinder we're using today is a, is a Bosch grinder. It's uh, 1100 watts, so middle of the road power wise. And um, I always like with non-woven products to reduce the speed if possible. So this is a variable speed grinder. I'm going to take this down to about 8,000, 7,000 RPM around about that speed before I start to grind. Just because I need to be gentle, you know, I don't want to be too aggressive with this, uh, with this product. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pack, do a few passes over the top of the here, remove all the damage, and then we'll see what finish we've got at the end of that. Okay. So Paul is using one of the more popular grades, uh, the medium grade, and as you heard him say earlier, we can skip a, a, the extra course and the course steps and go straight to medium because with the vortex grain, you're getting the benefit of that cutting power. So it cuts a little bit like a course, but, but it will finish like a fine grip. And you can see very quickly, he's managed to achieve the removal of those um, scratches. Yeah, that's done. So. You can see now. I'm going to leave. Uh, I'm going to leave this side with the uh, with the damage on, so we can compare later. But you can see easily, it's got a really nice uh, luster on there straight away, and well, really minimal time to be honest with you. It was very very quick to do. Okay, so it's rapid for a reason, my friend, isn't it? Huh? Exactly right. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to change over. Now again, we've got lots of different grades here, all the way from extra coarse, coarse, medium, fine, and very fine. What I'm going to do again, because of the power of the vortex, I'm going to jump another step. So I could, if wanted, use the fine. If I was using conventional aluminium oxide, perhaps I would have to use that to take the scratch down level by level by level to get the required finish. But with the power of the, the vortex in there, I don't need to. I can just go straight to the uh, very fine again. So that's another um, cost saving again, Robin, which you, you particularly enjoy, right? Yeah, being Scottish, that's perfect for us. It's a terrible thing to say, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm no comment from me on that side. So let's get it on again. Center pin playing its part, getting that disc right in the middle there. And now I'm just going to go over the same area that I went before and just take away that scratch. OK, I'll take away or refine the scratch that I've left with the uh, the medium uh, medium vortex. OK. 
So again, this will be quick, but uh, here you can see the illustration of the fact that uh, non-woven discs like this, surface conditioning material discs, are very comfortable and easy to use. Very soft and formable cushioned action that we're getting with the, uh, the, the back of the forward stroke. No vi very little vibration, as Paul was mentioning, again with the benefit of the, the backup pad but uh, very easy, very simple and easy to use. Yeah, and if you look at that now, you can see a distinct difference uh, with the finish we have there uh, versus what we had before, if you like. Yeah, we have a linear scratch on there, but we've changed that into a, into a rotary scratch, but a very nice, uh, a very nice finish. I think you can agree, it's, it's almost sub polish. And if we did take a surface measurement device on there, we'd have about 0.4 to 0.5 uh, of a roughness, uh, roughness average. So yeah, really, really versatile products these. We can use that on carbon steel. We can use that obviously on stainless steel as I've shown. Um, obviously on carbon steel, you don't need to get to such a high finish because it's generally going to be painted. But on stainless steel, it really comes into, uh, into its own. Another material where we see non-wovens used a great deal of products or materials like this. This is aluminium. And this aluminium has been, uh, has been extruded. And in the extrusion process, if we could just get a close up of that, please, Martin, you can see a lot of extrusion lines uh, that we get when it comes out of the die. And you can see all of those uh, on the surface there. I mean, if this is a visual uh, item, you know, if it's out in the street in public, then, you know, you're not really going to want to, to see these uh, extrusion lines. They're not so pretty. So again, you would need a surface conditioning material to, to take that out. Coated abrasives, conventional coated abrasives, such as these products, when they're used on aluminium, they load really, really quickly. And what I mean by loading is all the, the aluminium gets stuck to the, the surface of the, the abrasive, stops it working essentially. It just fills it full of the aluminium and it doesn't do anything. Yeah, clogs up. But when you use uh, you know, the, the rapid prep type products, um, it doesn't do that. There's space inside uh, this material to, to get to absorb the aluminium or to actually let it go. All right. I wouldn't recommend using Vortex on the aluminium because it's meant for more harder materials. I would stick to the standard aluminium oxide on, on this material to get uh, a better result. Unfortunately, I'm not going to grind on the aluminium today because to do that, to be safe, I'd need to have proper uh, uh, aspiration and masks uh, over over my mouth and nose uh, and we don't have time to get that kit on on the short time we've got here on the demonstration so you'll just have to take my my word for that okay so uh, what we can do now is we can uh, get another piece of, of, of stainless steel i'm going to show you a, another product within uh, the rapid uh, prep range very very similar to uh, the discs that we've just shown but uh, it's actually a flap disc and i'm sure you know, in the coated abrasives, you've seen people using fiber discs or flap discs. Now, this is the same difference. So we've seen how these work. We've seen the finish you can get from this kind of product. But the lifetime is not so long for these. It's what we call monolayer abrasive. There's only, you know, once one piece of abrasive on here. Once that's gone, it's, uh, it's finished and you, you can dispose of that. But one of our real star products is this uh, rapid prep flap disc, if you can see here. If I get the my, it right in the camera there, it's opposite lefts and rights when you're doing it like this is difficult. So it is exactly the same material. It's our LF material, so our low flex material adhered to a fiberglass backing plate. Uh, same as we see as a coated flat disc, but it does essentially exactly the same thing, but all it does is offer like, I think it's about nine to one lifetime ratio, isn't it, Robin? It's something uh, around that time. Yeah, that's what we're finding now, Paul. Yeah, so it's, it's for exactly the same applications, but the lifetime is much, much greater. But one distinct advantage with the flat disc is we can actually use it on edges. What, what we find with uh, the surface conditioning discs, when we start to go over onto sharp edges, because it's only mono layer, it tends to strip a lot of the abrasive and fibers uh, from the surface because it's a very aggressive edge. It's a 90 degree angle on hard material. It's going to put a lot of pressure on, on these, this, this product and it wears away very, very quickly. But the flat disc is much more resilient to that and it avoids, uh, well, it resists uh, that shedding that we see on surface conditions discs much, much more. So if you have uh, a fabrication with many different uh, uh, angles on there and angles on there that you need to condition or need to just deburr the edge slightly, just take off a bit of flash 
which we do get a lot uh, in in the manufacturing industry these products are absolutely ideal for for doing that so more versatility i think is the is the key for these so i'm going to get the um coarse grade which again is brown of course because that's the the color for for coarse and again we don't use grit sizes uh, with non-wovens because it doesn't work the same as uh, conventional coated abrasives that use uh, a grit size because it's 3D. So in the course we do use P80 inside this material but it doesn't give us a P80 finish it gives us more like a P120, P150 finish so we, ju we don't use a grit size we use a grade okay so that's why we use grades rather than uh, for grits. So I'm just going to show you a quick finish on this bit of stainless and show you how it can resist an aggressive application such as edge uh, edge grinding or deburring or uh, uh, rounding off the edges. Right. Okay. Yeah, so as Paul mentioned, this product is a little bit of a hidden gem. It's got the ability to do flat surfaces, but again, as you can see here, uh, can quite easily accommodate the edges and will do a little bit of uh, uh, edge reducing can also deeper again without the, the worry or the risk about uh, the disc starting to uh, chunk or, or, or shred. So there you go. As you can see, we've made, tried to make this edge nice and round now, so there's no sort of sharp point on there. No chance of a burr on the end here, because I'll just give it a quick flash over there. Again, surface condition disc can catch on this and it can rip them and it can sh shed them off really quickly, but you can see the disc here is really resilient. It's able to cope with that kind of uh, abuse uh, in application. So it does the same job as a surface conditioned disc. Uh, it's able to stand up to a lot more pressure than a surface conditioned disc. And it's way longer lasting uh, on the lifetime as well. OK, so uh, that's our family of uh, discs that we have uh, to show you here today. So again, we are limited for time. So I'm going to move on to our uh, our next product, which is our pump sleeve uh, belts that we have in front of us here. Again, the same kind of system uh, follows with the color grading. We have brown here for for coarse. We have uh, maroon here for uh, for um, uh, medium, and we have a blue here for very fine. So we can do exactly the same we did with the discs, but instead of a rotary finish that we have uh, with the discs we're going to get a, what we call a linear a linear finish instead which is sometimes uh, when you have larger larger areas or bigger sheets it's more appealing to get uh, a linear finish so i'm going to turn this component around to a, a brand new side and now what we're going to use today is we're going to use uh, what we call a, a satin x machine or a pump sleeve machine so this has uh, a pneumatic wheel on there so when i mean pneumatic we blow it up with air pressure uh, and we have a belt that slides over this pneumatic wheel. So we let the wheel down, uh, we slide the belt on, and we pump the wheel back up to get the pressure. So you can see it's, uh, it's slightly flexible. So instead of starting with the non-wovens, uh, because we've got less pressure, because we've got a soft wheel on here, I need something to give me a bit of a cutting action first of all. So I need a coated abrasive in uh, this one, I think is grit uh, 80. So not too coarse, uh, grit 80, nice and fine just to give us that bit of an initial cut because we don't have the same pressure on the surface as we do with uh with the um with the the angle grinder and the and the discs um so what i'm going to do i'm just going to you can see it already got a linear finish on the surface here and i'm just going to improve that and uh take away the scratches and put it back essentially to to, to how it was uh was before so going to pass up and down again variable speed machine uh, i think it's capable of uh, i think it goes up to uh, 3700 uh, rpm i've got that in the middle at, uh, at about uh, 2200 or something like that so nice to slow the speed down again with this because remember we're trying to take as much care of the surface as we possibly can so i'm just going to whiz over that with a coated and then we'll go on to the uh, wrapper brett belts uh, afterwards So quite important, as Paul mentioned, not to be too aggressive in the first step. We don't need to go coarse uh, and too rough a grit size. So 80 grit here is ideal just to remove the surface imperfections and allow the uh, benefit of the, the next steps that you're going to see in a, in a few moments. Yeah, so really quick to do, to be honest with you. It's really not uh, not a difficult application. Just use the weight of the machine and maybe a little bit more. Now I'm going to let down the uh, the tube. 
and I'm going to be able to slide, simply slide off this belt robin, which is always uh, easier said than done. There we go. And I'm going to go straight onto the uh, coarse grade uh, material. And this is, uh, carry on, Robin. That was seamless, Paul. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't always go as well as that. So um, I've, I've done well today. I'm pleased with myself already. So we get the sleeve on nice and easy. Now we're going to pump it back up using uh, the air pressure we have here. So we'll just put that in the nozzle there and we give it some bit of was of air. There we go. Doesn't have to be too uh, too hard or too much pressure in there, otherwise you'll burst the drum. That's more than uh, more than enough we've got on there. And we essentially do the same action. So you can see now we've got quite a heavy scratch on there. We've taken away the um, uh, the uh, the marks and the damage, but you can see we've got quite a lot of bright points in here. That's due to the coated abrasive we just used before. Uh, the sharp grits penetrate the material quite deeply and that gives you then them little shiny white spots you could see in here. Now we don't want that. It's not a bad look, but it's not um, sort of flat enough uh, for my liking. It's a bit too a bit too bright, but we need to get it. Go on. If, we, if we'd use a coarser grit, Paul, an 80 grit, the, those bright spots would be even uh, more uh, relevant yeah. as well. So that's a, another important point to remind people again about the fact that not to go too aggressive too early. Yeah, very, very true, mate. Very true. So again, we'll do the same again all over the surface with the coarse grade. And again, you're seeing the benefit of the cushioned action of the product. It's able to absorb into, if this was a more awkward shaped component, it would be able to absorb into some of the contours as well. But great for flat surfaces, this particular machine and this particular belt type as well. Yeah, and I'm just going to go through all the belts until we get to the very fine robin, uh, one after the other. So uh, just to so just to see that we can get the same finish as the disc, but with a linear scratch instead. And this is where we really struggle getting these off. They're not easy to get off. We went through a lot of time perfecting the right material for these belts, Robin. Right to to make sure we get the the material that is as easy as possible to get off these uh, off these pump sleeves. And uh, we ended up uh, using the uh, XF material, the extra flexible material, right, Robin? Yes. Yeah. We started with RF, a bit too stiff, right? And we've also got that now coming out in the Vortex, uh, with the Vortex grain as well. We do. Okay, do the same again with the medium. Let's refine that scratch we left from the course. Yep, again. Very, very quick to uh, to get to the surface finish level that you look, you want to achieve with these uh, with these rapid prep surface condition material belts. And you can see on here, I haven't quite got the sleeve all the way on. It doesn't matter. There's no uh, there's no issue with uh, with doing that. Let's let some air out a bit more than last time, maybe. Okay. Is it possible to see what kind of surface finish that we were generated at this point, Paul, after the medium? Once I've got this belt off, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Thanks for giving me more more problems, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 quite, it's quite simple, to be honest with you. It's just, it's just about letting the, enough air out of the pump sleeve each time you do it to be able to do that, uh, that easily. But, you know, they last a long time. So it's not, you know, the tool changes, they take a little bit of time, but you don't have to do them so often. Uh, there we go. Bit more air. Okay, so yes, Robin, let's have a look at the finish. So as you can see, um, like last time, we had a lot of bright white uh, uh, lines or spark sparkles in there, and they've gone. All right, still a little bit, but that's why we're going to use the very fine belt just to take the last of them uh, them away, just to make it look uh, really. Uh, uh, spot on flawless linear linear finish okay so on we go so the grades that we've used we started with a coarse grit after the 80 grit coated belt and then we use a medium the maroon color and now we have the blue very fine uh, and we also find that the fine green product uh, in grade is uh, a very good intermediary step as well uh, but for the benefit of this application, uh, coarse, medium, and then very fine. Yeah, uh, you know, we we have the extra coarse as well, the, the the black grade available too. So 
there's a full range depending on what you want to do and what material you're working on. We do see people that were using the burnishes on uh, on carbon steel just to just to give it a quick uh, quick shine before before the components finished. Um, and the extra course is handy for that. But on stainless steel, we really want to get to the finish as we have here. So really difficult to show you that guy. Ah, there we have it. Yeah. So you can see now there's no real bright spark showing. It's a pretty homogeneous finish. It's the same across the whole length of the material. And you've got your nice linear scratch back that you started with. It's actually better than the, the finish that came from uh, from the factory debunch. You see here, you can see the past lines of the, the roll uh, or the belts that sanded this in the first place. Here, you've got a linear finish and you can't see that. So it is actually a, an improved, uh, improved finish you've got there. And versus the discs, yeah. Yeah, so there we go, the discs. You can see that's more shiny and polished because you've got a rotary finish. We're looking at the scratches in a different area, but the belts give you that nice, uh, nice linear. So it just depends what you're after. It depends what you're doing, and it depends on the size of your component. These uh, pumps, these are burnishes, really good for larger areas that need that uh, consistent linear finish. The angle grinders and the, and the uh, uh, surface conditioning discs, great for smaller, smaller components where that rotary finish doesn't matter matter so much. Okay, so we move swiftly on to uh, a file belt now. Okay, so components we've seen so far, you know, these uh, box section steel, the aluminium, easy, because we just work on the surface, it's easy to access. But when we have other components that are a bit more difficult to access, such as, you know, something like this, some tube welded together, it's not so easy to uh, get the uh, angle grinder into here. If you see, I'm trying to polish these parts. It's very difficult because the tool is uh, and the guard is actually stopping me getting inside this uh, this component. So need to do something about that. Still need to get in here. You can see on there if you can zoom into this, uh, Martin, if possible. Actually, I'll just move it around a little bit. You can see the weld dirty, lots of burn, lots of blue. We want to take that away. We don't want to take the weld away. It's structural, okay? We want to keep the weld in situ to keep the component strength. But what we want to do is just take away that, uh, that burn and that bluing. Um, if that is the case, I don't need to use a conventional coated uh, belt beforehand. I could just go straight on to a rapid prep belt, which we can do here, all right? So let's get this on the Dyna Braid machine. This is the Dyna File 2. Much prefer these machines over the one. They're really nice to use. So this is from the XF family, Paul, where it's the most yes. flexible of all the materials that we have. Good point, Robin. Thank you for that. Yeah, so this is XF material. We started on the disc, which is uh, uh, LF. The belts, which the big belts we're not covering today are RF. And the extra flex is the file belt material, purely because this has to go around this small contact wheel. So you go and like, there you have a perfect view there, Martin. Thank you. You can see the belt has to twist around this very small contact wheel. And if we tried to make this belt out of LF, the low flex material, it would not do it. It's just too stiff to go around here. So this material is specifically designed to fit on this machine, the extra flex material. So really nice product. Okay, so let's get some power from the air in here, Martin. Okay, so you have to check these before you start them because they've got a little tracking arm on here. So sometimes the belt wants to move on the contact wheel, but this one's absolutely fine. Now I can use this tool on a few different planes. I can grind on the very tip on the contact wheel on the edge, or I can also grind on this area of the belt here, which is called the platen. And you say, so it's got a platen on both top and bottom or the actual tip as well. So I can use this tool, you know, up here, round here, down here, on the edge here. It's really, really versatile. And we'll show you how it can take off this burn uh, or the bluing on this weld really, really easily. see here that you've got a, the ability to go into uh, or access all the difficult to reach areas that you couldn't normally do with
Okay. Ooh, thank you very much, Robin. Yeah. No, it, it isn't an easy one to do, and there's no other tool that can get in there. I mean, the only other option to do that is to actually do it manually, to get some hand pad material and actually go in there with your hands and spend hours uh, rubbing it out of the way. But with the uh, file belts, the XF file belts on there, uh, and, and to get in there, was just make it so much quicker and so much easier. So if that's an industrial application you have, you know, you don't want to be doing that by hand if you can avoid it, but getting your file belt machine gets you a nice finish uh, very, very quickly. And of course, same as all the other products, this is available from extra coarse all the way through to very fine. So whatever finish you actually require, you can achieve that uh, with no issues with, uh, with uh, these file belts. All right, I know we're running a little bit over time, but I just want to show you one final application that we find uh, uh, our rapid prep material being used a great deal is in the aerospace uh, aerospace industry. Now, this is uh, actually a turbine blade from a jet aircraft, a jet engine. Um, it's made of Inconel, I think it's 718. It's very, very, very hard to grind material. And uh, what uh, operators need to do in, in factories where they uh, where they finish these parts is they do finish them by hand surprisingly uh, because there's so much different geometry on these parts um, but there are sometimes flaws in the casting on this which they need to rectify with uh, with belts and the belt of choice is uh, a non-woven belt a rapid prep or a surface conditioning belt and the reason is with a coated abrasive it's possible you could damage this blade um, or you know grind too much in one area and that's a reject and these blades once they've been cast are worth a lot of money so we really want to avoid rejects and that's one of the things these things are really good for they do remove material but in a very very controlled rate whilst giving you that finish that you require we can also use it on the training edge and the leading edge of this blade without damaging that airfoil surface or creating a, a problem on there in canal really really hard to grind but with this uh, uh special vortex we have in this uh, uh, uh rapid prep xf belt we were able to cut into this in canal quite well but without uh, damaging the standard ao stuff it wouldn't touch it it just glides over the top does no work the the vortex just gives us that extra bit of cut for this extra hard material so i'll just show you that very quickly <laughs> Yeah, so as Paul mentioned, uh, aggressive uh, and, and with the ability to get into a very awkward contoured uh, area as well. Whilst at the same time, also with the ability to edge radius and again debar. Even in here, Robin, in, into that edge, this corner where you can take the material into a concave surface, which is the most difficult part to grind, right? Absolutely. And managing all of that, Paul. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, so really, really handy for hard to uh, hard to reach areas, the uh, uh, the these uh, the file belts. Very good for, for that. Okay, I'm aware of the time. We're 45 minutes into this and it was only supposed to be 40 minutes long, so I do apologize running over a little bit uh, a little bit today. But um to summarize, Robin uh, Rapid prep, very, very versatile material. It's uh, available in lots of different formats. Again, we're just showing a few of these here. We have many, many other types of products we could convert this uh, this special material into. And and, and it, you're able to, with a complement of coated abrasives, achieve a really nice finish very, very quickly and very easily, removing, again, steps out of your your uh, your normal application if you're using pure pure coated abrasives we can do it and finish it faster and more consistently involving these uh, the products we have in front of us here anything to add there robin yeah and within those five grades that you've highlighted paul there's something to for for everybody to to whether they need to do yeah. a collection or, or or a mix of different grades or whether they want to just jump straight into uh, a particular the benefit of the medium grade uh, and not only to be aware of that, but also the fact that we've got vortex grain technology going into these products too, which allows you to generate a little bit of cut and a finish in the one step, as we we said earlier on. Absolutely. Combined, combined with that resin technology of uh, with the reduced smearing effect from the clean bond benefit. 
and whatever material you have, whether it be exotic alloys, uh, stainless steel, carbon steel or aluminium, there is a solution within this product we can guide you to to get the, the best and maximise the performance of your, of your product. OK, so uh, I think that brings us to the end uh, of, of the, the session. For those that you are, are watching uh, live, please stick around for the qu question and answer session at the end. But those of you watching the recorded session on, on our YouTube channel, thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget lots of other uh, content and media on, on our channel. Please, uh, please have a look while, while, you're, while you're with us. We'll see you again next time after our summer break back in September. Bye bye.